after baptism, the next step in Christian initiation is confirmation. We see this sacrament of the Holy Spirit already in the Acts of the Apostles. Peter and John were sent to the newly baptized Samaritans, and the apostles laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. At Ephesus, St. Paul baptized the believers, and when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Spirit came upon them. The matter of the sacrament is the laying on of hands with anointing of a baptized person. The form is the words, Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. The minister of confirmation is ordinarily a bishop, though confirmation can be administered by a priest who receives delegation from the bishop. The letter to the Hebrews speaks of this laying on of hands for the reception of the Holy Spirit as one of the basic elements of Christian initiation. Very early, perhaps as early as the apostles themselves, the anointing with sacred oil, called chrism, was added to the laying on of hands. The chrism is blessed by the bishop on Maundy Thursday at the chrism mass. This anointing with chrism highlights the Christian as a follower of Christ. Christ means Messiah, the anointed one. Christ's high priestly and prophetic and royal humanity was anointed by the Holy Spirit, and the Christian shares this anointing by the Spirit. This is outwardly symbolized by the anointing with chrism in the confirmation rite. For this reason, confirmation is called chrismation by Eastern Christians. The effects of confirmation are the completion of baptismal grace by imparting a spiritual seal upon the soul. The special outpouring of the Holy Spirit received in confirmation is meant primarily to adorn the soul of a Christian with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, so that the believer can then be prepared to live the Eucharistic life, that is, a life lived in Christ and for His glory. A secondary purpose is to strengthen the confirmand with the Holy Spirit so that he can witness publicly to Christ and extend the kingdom of Christ. In confirmation, as in baptism and ordination, the Holy Spirit imprints a seal, sragis in Greek, upon a baptized believer, making an indelible mark on the one whom the Spirit anoints. Christ's own high priestly humanity is permanently consecrated and sealed. For as St. John says, On him has God the Father set his seal. So also the Father seals us in the Son by the Spirit. He has put his seal upon us and given us his Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. In him you also, who have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it, to the praise of his glory. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit, in whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. So writes St. Paul to the Corinthians and to the Ephesians. The sealing by the Holy Spirit in the sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and ordination therefore imprints a permanent character that marks forever the soul of one who receives any of these sacraments. For that reason, these three sacraments are unrepeatable for they give a share in Christ's own priesthood. It is a common error to think that the purpose of confirmation is for the baptized to ratify by personal decision their baptismal commitment. On the contrary, confirmation, like all the sacraments, is efficacious ex opere operato, by the very fact of the actions being performed and does not have to wait for our natural maturity in order to be efficacious. St. Thomas Aquinas explains this point as follows. Age of body does not determine age of soul. Even in children, man can attain spiritual maturity. As the Book of Wisdom says, For old age is not honored for the length of time, or measured by number of years. Many children through the strength of the Holy Spirit they have received, have bravely fought for Christ, 
even to the shedding of their blood. Some even have the distorted idea that after their sons and daughters are confirmed, Catholic parents need no longer insist upon their children attending Sunday Mass anymore, on the pretext that they have become mature Christians and can decide for themselves. That is clearly false. No baptized person of any age any longer belongs to himself in the sense of being free to refuse to God the honor and worship that is due to him. The practice of religion is a matter of justice, for it is owed to God on the part of individuals and families and societies. As St. Paul writes to the Romans, None of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. In confirmation we are marked with our Lord's own seal, for we belong to him, marked for his service like a soldier or a slave in the ancient world. And while the Catechism acknowledges the duty of obedience to parents, ceases when sons and daughters are emancipated as adults, none of us at any age is emancipated from God our Father in heaven, or from Jesus Christ our Savior, or from the Holy Spirit whose permanent seal we bear. As St. Paul writes, When we cry, Abba, Father, it is the Spirit himself bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. In addition, adolescents who have been confirmed and living under their parents' care are still minors and not yet adults. Catholic parents must therefore insist that their teenage children continue to attend Mass after confirmation, just as they see to it that they go to school and have food and clothing. Confirmation is not a graduation from the practice of the faith, but a step toward a deeper practice of it in the power of the Holy Spirit. At the deepest level, we never outgrow the need for the humility of childlike faith, and God forbid that we ever wish to do so. Our Lord Jesus said, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child, he is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. At the same time, we are indeed called to leave behind the bad sort of childishness, that is, pride and self-will and the desire to fit in with the world and its fashions at any cost. We thus seek to grow in grace, as the Apostle says, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no more be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the cunning of men, by their craftiness in deceitful wiles. The gifts of the Spirit received in confirmation are wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety, and fear of the Lord. True growth, true maturation in Jesus Christ is the fruition of these gifts of the Holy Spirit, leading to a life of faith and holiness. <laughs>